The Tesla Powerwall 3 is the best battery specification I've seen to date. And more than that, I actually think it might define the future of home battery storage. Let's find out why. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Having a home battery as part of your solar installation provides many benefits. And to get a background on things, here are four videos I recently made that are worth watching. The first video covers the main benefits of a home battery within a solar installation. The second covers all the benefits of having a home battery without any solar. The third shows how and why battery prices are continuing to fall. And this fourth video looks in detail at the many features of home batteries so you can make the best buying decision. Links to all these videos are in the description and they'll also be selectable at the end of this video. If you think about all the different features of a home battery, when an early adopter chooses a home battery for themselves, it's a personal decision as to which battery features are most important. And of course, the next early adopter may prioritize those same features differently. In this video though, I want to consider what features are most important for the mass market. And actually, I don't think the ranking of features for the mass or early adopter markets are all that different. And if you're an early adopter, I'd love to hear whether you concur with the feature ranking that I'm about to go through. Now, I made this video because I believe the Tesla Powerwall 3 specification is the future of home battery storage. Why Tesla though? There are many home battery manufacturers to choose from. LG, Panasonic, Enphase, Franklin, Give Energy, SunPower. Well, I think it's fair to say that Tesla has led the home battery market ever since it entered back in 2015 with the original Tesla Powerwall. Certainly other companies at the time were looking at wall-mounted battery storage, but it was Tesla that truly revolutionized the industry, making home energy storage a mainstream concept and setting a new standard for design, functionality and consumer appeal. And just one year later, Tesla raised its own bar with the launch of Powerwall 2. So iconic in terms of design and superior capabilities that even today, almost a decade later, which is forever in terms of technology progression, it remains the gold standard in home energy storage and still sets the benchmark by which other home batteries are judged against. And meanwhile, Tesla continues to innovate, raising their own bar again with the launch of Powerwall 3 three weeks ago. So going back to what I think are the most important battery features for the mass market, I'll be looking to see how the Powerwall 3 specification stacks up against each of those. And I'm specifically talking about the specification and not the product because I fully expect other home battery manufacturers to copy that Powerwall 3 specification, just as they did with Powerwall 2. And that's a good thing as it brings healthy competition to the market. And as consumers, we all benefit from that as a result. Okay, let's get started. And a good place to start is battery capacity. What's a good size of battery for the mass market? Well, that depends on a whole number of factors, but for a mass market product, what should be the minimum capacity? Five kilowatt hours? A few years ago, maybe, but I'm hearing more and more that people are suggesting on forums that a 10 kilowatt hour battery is really the minimum these days, even for a low energy user. Now the Tesla Powerwall 3 has a capacity of 13 and a half kilowatt hours which is slightly more, but allows for greater flexibility for some of the features I'm going to cover shortly. Tesla believes that this size of battery is sufficient for most properties to power them for the day in the event of a blackout. And that's perhaps why they kept the capacity the same as the Powerwall 2. Now, some of you might be thinking, there's no way a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery could run my home for a day, myself included. In my own installation, I have two 9.5 kilowatt hour Give Energy batteries, totaling 19 kilowatt hours. And I could really do with another given my daily usage, and also if I were to add a heat pump. So what's the solution for those who need more capacity then? Just like the Powerwall 2, Powerwall 3 is stackable, and you can have four units stacked together to give a total of 54 kilowatt hours of storage, which should be enough for most people. Next up is power output. This is the rate at which the battery can discharge its energy to power home appliances to avoid drawing energy from the grid. And the higher the power output of the battery, the better. My own batteries can only discharge at a rate of 3.6 kilowatts. And whilst that's sufficient for most of the day, there are times when I exceed this level. For example, in the evening when I'm cooking and I have the oven and the electric hob going together. 
The Powerwall 2 and most other manufacturers who design to a similar specification provide a power output of 5 kilowatts. That's better, but if your home has a heat pump and or air conditioning, your power requirement throughout the day will be a couple of kilowatts higher anyway, so the advantage is lost. The Tesla Powerwall 3 avoids all of this, however, as it has a power output of a whopping 11.5 kilowatts. And that's likely way more than any home would ever draw. Even better, Elon Musk said on X a few weeks ago that a Powerwall 3 can supply a peak power of around 30 kilowatts. And that's enough to handle dryers and air conditioning units when they start up. If you're enjoying this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That will help persuade the YouTube algorithm to show it to many others. Thank you. And this brings us very nicely onto Emergency Power Supply, or EPS. One of the great benefits of having a battery that supports EPS is that it can act as an emergency power supply in the event the grid goes down for any reason. There are different levels of EPS available with batteries. At the most basic level, it can provide a couple of power outlets that remain live in the event of grid failure. But the top level provides whole house backup with seamless transition. And I think this top level is what the mass market would be expecting, a backup solution that's fully automatic and won't interrupt people's lives in the event of grid failure. And just like the Tesla Powerwall 2, the Powerwall 3 offers whole house backup with seamless transition. And this is where the high power output of Powerwall 3 really comes into play. The first you're likely to know about it is when you get a notification in the Tesla app. And when that happens, you'll still likely want to start turning off all non-essential appliances to preserve the battery state of charge for as long as possible. And it's also worth noting that if you have solar panels and the sun is out during a grid outage, the solar generation will help keep your Powerwall 3 topped up. And there's one other feature that the Powerwall 3 has relating to EPS, and that's called Stormwatch. Severe weather is the leading cause of grid outages, and so with this feature enabled, Powerwall 3 is in regular communication with the National Weather Service of your country. And should a severe weather event be forecast, the Powerwall 3 will charge itself to its maximum capacity in readiness until the event has passed. Now before we go on to the next mass market feature, if you're in the UK and you'd like to help support my channel, please consider switching your energy supply over to Octopus. They're rated the best provider in the UK, and having been with them for over a year and a half now, I've no hesitation in recommending them to you. Even better, you'll get £50 credited to your account if you switch using my referral code here, and I'll receive £50 too, which goes a long way to keeping this channel going. A huge thanks to everyone who switched using my code already, I really appreciate it. Okay, next up is the integration of a solar inverter into the same unit. Typically with solar installations, the solar inverter, also called a string inverter, is a separate unit to the batteries and the other equipment, and this makes for a less attractive look in the home or garage, with additional wiring required as well. But having a solar inverter and battery within the same housing makes for a far neater setup and one which I think will be more appealing to the mass market. The Powerwall 3 is a fully integrated solar and battery system, and that offers quite a few benefits over other solutions. Now looking at the Powerwall 3 solar inverter itself, it's pretty high spec. It can handle solar arrays of up to 20 kilowatts peak, which again is way more than will be required for most homes. But even better, while most solar inverters allow only two or maybe three string inputs, the Powerwall 3 can handle up to six. For the mass market, this offers tremendous flexibility. It's perfect for homes with complex roof designs spanning multiple orientations, and it also allows any shaded panels to be isolated into their own string to maximize generation without the need to install optimizers. And it offers a very high solar to home efficiency of 97.5%. Okay, moving on to weather protection now. In the mass market, many batteries will be fitted to the exterior of the home. It's important then that the battery can withstand the impact of weather extremes. The Tesla Powerwall 2 has active heating with a liquid thermal management system, and this keeps the battery within an optimum temperature range during cold spells. Now with Powerwall 3, there's no active thermal management system as far as I'm aware, but it's able to cool itself through mainly passive means a cold air intake at the bottom of the aluminium housed unit, which enables natural convection, but there's also a built-in fan to circulate air if needed. And in cold temperatures, there's a feature called heat mode. I'm not exactly sure how this feature works, 
but it might exercise the cells to keep them warm at the expense of a little power loss. One other interesting feature of the Powerwall 3 is that the unit is flood resistant up to 60 centimeters, which is just over half its height. The next feature then is about battery chemistry. If you've watched my other home battery videos, you'll know that I much prefer lithium iron phosphate LFP chemistry over nickel manganese cobalt NMC chemistry because it's much safer in the home environment. And whilst the Tesla Powerwall 2 battery is NMC chemistry, it was rumored for some time that the Tesla Powerwall 3 would be LFP chemistry. However, since it was launched, there's no definitive indication that it actually is LFP. I can't find anything on the technical data sheets and even the unit plate doesn't say anything more than lithium ion. But we could do a little bit of detective work. LFP chemistry has a lower energy density compared to NMC chemistry, which means if you have two batteries with the same capacity, one NMC and the other LFP, the LFP battery will generally be larger and heavier. Now both the Powerwall 2 and Powerwall 3 batteries have the same capacity at 13.5 kilowatt hours. And the Powerwall 3 is certainly heavier by around 14%, but it has smaller volume. This could be explained, however, if the Powerwall 3 uses prismatic format cells rather than cylindrical battery cells as used in the Powerwall 2. LFP batteries tend to use prismatic cells as they are considered more efficient in terms of space utilization. And so on balance, I'm going to assume the Powerwall 3 is indeed LFP chemistry. And that's good because if it wasn't LFP, I just don't think I could promote the Powerwall 3 specification as the future of home battery storage. I'll of course keep you updated with any additional information I get on this, and please could you let me know if you hear anything one way or the other. Many thanks. Okay, let's now talk about the ease of installation. It's really important that for any home battery solution destined for the mass market, it has to have an easy and quick installation process both on the part of the installer so that they can cover as many installations in one day as possible to meet market demand and generate a good profit, but also for the consumer, just for convenience. The difficulties are in two areas really, wiring the home battery into the customer's consumer unit or meter panel and adding capability to isolate the home from the grid in order to provide whole home backup. Now Tesla has addressed both of these, at least in the US market, with what they call the Tesla backup switch. It's quite a cool innovation for homes with combined utility meter and main panel boxes as it seamlessly fits behind the customer's utility meter and it reduces the need for extra wiring and electrical components. It also provides a sleek aesthetic appearance. The main benefit though is that it dramatically reduces power wall installation times. Here in this video from Tesla, the typical installation time was reduced down from 4 hours to just 21 minutes. I'll put a link in the description for all the information on the Tesla backup switch and that includes the example video you've just seen. Finally then, let's look at automated battery management. Wouldn't it be great that once your home battery is installed, you don't have to do anything and it will automatically manage itself to provide the most optimum environmental and financial benefits to you. And this includes charging from the grid when the energy is cheaper and cleaner and discharging back to the grid at peak times to reduce the level of fossil fuel burning. And for the mass market, this kind of automation is essential. What stands out about Tesla's approach is their commitment to not just supplying home battery hardware, but also creating a comprehensive ecosystem around it. This includes their role as a dedicated energy provider through Tesla Energy, which enables homeowners to integrate their batteries into a virtual power plant, or VPP which in turn contributes to a more sustainable power grid and a revenue generating opportunity for the homeowner. Tesla Energy is available in certain states in the US today and soon to be available in the UK and likely other countries over time. I wouldn't expect all the other home battery manufacturers to also become energy providers, but those that offer extensive remote control capability through software APIs will have a strong advantage over their competitors. Third-party services using these APIs will be able to provide automated battery management for the mass market. Okay, so those are all the features that I think are important for the mass market adoption of home batteries. And you can see that the Powerwall 3 specification continues to define the standard by which other battery manufacturers will follow. Now that's not to say that you need to buy a Tesla Powerwall 3, but it is a good yardstick to measure the latest home battery offerings that will come into the market from the other manufacturers. 
Thanks for watching and I hope this video has been useful to you and I'll see you in the next one.